Today, we're doing some tiny detail using the carving liner bit and a router. So today we're using our template of the month for January of 2024. Happy New Year, guys. And if you don't know, we give templates and stencils for our premium and executive members along with free router bit sharpening and a bunch of other benefits. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check it out. And we're also using our inch and a half squares bold font. I really like how these things turn out and this is the first time we're doing them outset. So let's see how it goes. We get asked a lot of questions about doing really tiny detail work. Well, the stars on this Maltese cross is a perfect example of how small you can really go and still make them look good without spending a ton of money on a CNC. Let's get after it. So we're gonna have our template on the left side of the board. So we put that there, that way we make sure we have enough room for all the lettering we want. Then we put equal spacing on the top and the bottom for each line. Now because we're doing these outset, you wanna make sure that you leave enough room to do the cloud around the lettering. Once we have our lines drawn, then we just line up the biggest line first. So American is gonna be the longest section of lettering that we have. Once we get that where we want it, then we're going to put the smaller line, which is heroes, and we're going to center that on the American line. So it's just kind of making sure that you know exactly what you want your sign to look like and just having it look very symmetrical. Once the lettering's all done, then we just use our primer and we spray it black. Make sure that you do this really light and you hold the can probably about 18 inches above. That way you're not blowing your letters all over the place. This is something we don't show all that often and honestly we don't really do it that much but if you're a beginner it's a really good idea to draw straight lines on the top and bottom of both of your lines of lettering. That way you have a really good idea of where your carving needs to be. Real quick guys, we are on a campaign to hit 100,000 subscribers this year. That is our goal, so it would help us out immensely if you guys would hit that subscribe button and click the little bell icon. That way you get notified when we put out new content and we sure appreciate it guys. Back to carving. The first bit we used was the carving liner bit at an eighth of an inch deep. Now when it comes to fine detail, this is by far the best bit we've ever used. There's some other ones out there like the SC50 and a few other ones, but this one is really, really good. And what really sets it apart is the fact that it cuts so smooth. For such a fine detail bit, it really, really cuts well. Some of the other ones, they tear out a little bit and it's a lot harder to control. This is a single flute bit and it comes to such a fine point that you can really get into the small areas that you wouldn't be able to get into with a profile bit. The next bit we're using is the profile bit at 3 16 of an inch deep. Now these stars are pretty close together and so are some of the other lines, but you'll notice that dad is using his right hand to hold the base on the board and he's using his left hand to micro adjust his depth. So you want to make sure when you're doing something like this, you don't want to just set the bit in the board because if it's a little bit off, you're going to knock out some of those stars and then it's just going to look weird. The nice thing about the base plate that we use is the fact that you can micro adjust your depth depending on what it is you're carving. And I will leave a link for those in the description. Once the stars are all done, then it's really pretty simple. Now you'll notice that this line right here that dad's carving gets real thin. You do not have to keep that line that thin. You want it to be able to be seen so you don't want to have a super duper thin outline. So dad's just kind of splitting the difference, taking out a little bit of the interior line and bringing it out a little bit on the exterior line. 
So when it comes to something like that, remember guys, this is artwork. So you have a little bit of leeway. So just kind of split the difference and then you'll still get a good solid line in there that gives you a contrast from your carving to the board. Once that's all done, then dad's just gonna take out the rest of the wood with the profile bit. Now that all the hard work is done, I'm gonna hop in there and start carving. So I'm using the profile bit, again, at about 3 16 maybe a touch deeper, but something that makes the squares bold letters a little bit more of a challenge to carve is the fact that they have very sharp points. Now on the outside, that's no big deal, but like on the inside of the A, it is a, a really, really angled triangle, and you wanna be able to get that as sharp as you can. But remember, it doesn't have to be perfect because there's no way you're gonna get those perfect sharp points and still carve deep enough to be able to see. So just kind of play with it a little bit, figure out what depth you like. But when you get it, I really, really like how the Squares Bold font looks. It's got kind of an aggressive look, but it's super easily readable and it just looks really clean. One thing you'll kind of notice is that this board is a little bit grainy, so I want to be careful not to chip out any of my letters. So when I'm doing outset, I start out a little bit, and if I have to feather it in and take out a little tiny bit to kind of smooth up that line and make sure I get my carving right where I want to, that's all right, guys. This does not have to be done in one pass. That's how mistakes happen. Trust me, I've made a lot of nice looking firewood because I tried to go all in one pass and I didn't work my way in towards the line. It just takes a little bit of practice, but I like carving outset more than inset. You have much more room for error and personally, I think it looks a little bit better. Once all of my outline is done with my profile bit, then I'm gonna use my 90 degree bit at a quarter of an inch deep to do the cloud and take out all of the wood around the lettering. Now, everybody does a cloud a little bit differently. For me, I like to kind of have it follow the contours of the letters. Some people like it a lot bigger, some people like it a lot smaller. That's one of the best things about what we do, you guys, is the simple fact that you can make it your own. There's so many different ways to do this stuff. But once I get all of my outline done, then I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna make sure that I take the interior of any letters out first, like the R's and the O. If you don't do that, then it's super easy to forget to do that after your sign is all sprayed and sanded. Again, I've done that a ton of times too. When you're doing this, I just like to go in small little circles and just get as close as I can. But on the inside of like the E and the S, there's certain areas that I can't really get that bit in. So I'm gonna get as much as I can with a 90 degree bit. Then I'm gonna go back in with, uh, I use like a little tiny wood carving tool, but you can use a pocket knife or whatever, and just chip out anything that you think is gonna be a high spot once you spray it and sand it. Make sure before you spray it that you brush it really well and blow it out. Now there's a couple areas here where there's a knot hole or maybe a split and I don't want any black in there. So I just use a couple pieces of tape and tape those off before I sprayed it. Notice I sprayed at different angles to make sure I have an even look back there. And make sure you take the tape off before you sand it. It's not a huge deal, but it kind of gets irritating if your tape clogs up your sanding disc. We used an 80 grit disc on our disc sander and then 120 grit on the random orbital to give it a good smooth finish.
Once it's all sanded and blown off, then we put a nice coat of clear on there with our Rust-Oleum clear spray. Now it only shows one on the video, but it's actually got three or four total coats on it. So this thing turned out really cool. The tiny stars on the Maltese cross, those were tough. Of course, I wouldn't know. I had dad do it. Anyway, I hope you guys like this. As always, we will leave links in the description below for the Maltese cross, for the squares bold, and everything else we use today. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can send me an email with any questions, ryan at makeawoodsign.com, and we'll see you on the next one.